best hands on. Hello everyone, this is FlowHigh117 here, and welcome to the QAV250 in-depth review. If you're not familiar with the QAV250 by now, then you've probably been living under a rock. If that's the case, don't worry about it. I'll put a list in the description below with all the parts so that you can see exactly where I got them. Which 99.9% .9 of them came from GetFPV.com. Insert their logo here. Anyways, let's get on with the review. The QAV250 is a 250mm sized mini quadcopter. This particular version of the QAV250 I have is the G10 version, which weighs 170 grams, including all of its hardware. GetFPV has recently released their carbon fiber version of this frame, which shaves off 50 grams total, which in my opinion is great to offer that because if you're a more aggressive flyer like I am, then every gram you can shave off these minis really does help their performance. However, if you're the more average flyer that doesn't like to do a thousand flips every flight and just likes to have the general FPV mini quad experience, then the standard G10 version is a great option and it also helps you save a little bit of money if you have a tight build budget. Now for those of you wondering why I'm flying in a cemetery, the reason was simple. While I was driving by in my car, I was dying to fly there. Nah, but in all seriousness, this brings up another great reason about why I love the QAV250. If you have a QAV250, you have the option to buy this really nice and protective travel case. Having this protective case has been great. I don't have to worry about anything smashing my mini quad in the back of my car or you know if you're on a plane you don't have to worry about anybody you know dropping your luggage or anything and you're getting all banged up and broken this case has really been nice you simply slide in all your charged batteries that you have unscrew your antenna that's on your quad slide your quad into the pre-cut slots that it falls into also has these little prop guards to help keep your props in line so they don't get smashed or anything then you simply slide in your antenna into the pre-cut antenna hole it also has spots for a Mobius camera or you know any other accessories that you might have that you need to put in there. Then you can simply close the case and know that it's protected by pretty much everything, even chupacabras. I originally built my QAV250 with the power setup that was provided on their website, which was their Lumineer 12 amp Simon K Flash ESCs and their Lumineer FX 2206 2000 kV motors. Now I initially saw the specs of the motors, I was confused. This was confusing me because I wasn't sure why they would choose to use such a large motor with such a low KV and choose to spin a small 5 inch prop on 3 cell. It just didn't seem to make much sense to me and I didn't think it would make very much lift or be very powerful. So as I flew the QAV250 with this configuration on 3 cell, I quickly realized my suspicions about not having enough power on 3 cell for my style of flying was true. Here are a couple of examples of how much power it has when you get full throttle on 3 cell. After about two to two and a half minutes of how I fly, I was barely able to even fly any longer because the voltage would get so low. Another thing I would experience while flying on 3 cell is the voltage would drop, I would start to spin out a lot because the motors didn't have enough head speed to counteract the oversteer and basically you're spinning out everywhere in the sky. So I contacted GetFPV and asked that they had a 12 amp 3 to 4 cell ESC that I could replace the ones I have on right now because I knew the motors could run 4 cell on these 5 inch props no problem and should make a decent amount of thrust. Shortly after that I received a reply back saying that they have some new ESCs coming in and that they will send me out some for testing. So while I was waiting for the ESCs to come in I decided to look for some batteries that are 4 cell that should weigh around the same weight as a stock battery that way I'm not throwing the CG off any more than I would have to. As you can see here, the stock 3 cell battery weighed 103 grams, so I wanted to get something that was 4 cell as close enough to that weight as possible. So I was able to buy 4 batteries that I thought would be the best for testing and still keeping in around the same weight as the stock batteries. The best battery out of the 4 new 4S batteries I was able to test was definitely the Nanotech 1000 milliamp 4 cell 25C battery. The reason I like this battery the best is because it kept my aircraft light and agile and giving it the performance it needed, which fits my particular flight style the best. However, the Nanotech 1300mAh 4 cell 25C battery was definitely the best battery for flight times. It provided the longest flight time and gave it the best all around cruising performance that most people might enjoy the most. The other batteries I tested was the Zippy Compact 1000mAh 25C 4 cell battery. The Zippy Compact 1300 milliamp 4 cell 35C battery. 
Oh, and I almost forgot. I even tried a 2200 milliamp Turnigy 4 cell battery on there just for fun to see if it can fly with it. And sure enough, it did, and it flew for about 9.5 minutes. Now, luckily for me, my new 12 amp Simon K 2 to 4S ESCs have come in the mail, so I was able to quickly get to work on removing the old ESCs and installing the new ones. They are a little bit bigger, but they still fit just fine. Now, even though that if you look at the wrapping, it says 2 to 3 cell, they actually do 2 to 4 cell just fine. Trust me, I've flown it a ton of times and I haven't had any problems. They've been performing great. Now that I have been able to fly the QAV on 4 cell with these motors, it has really wakened the quad up. It has been a blast to fly, and the weird low voltage spin outs that I used to have on 3 cell have pretty much disappeared. Here are a few video samples of how much better it flies on 4 cell versus the 3 cell before. <laughs> So my recommendations to those pilots that are a little bit more aggressive flyers like myself, definitely run the FX2206 2000 kV motors on 4 cell, it'll be a much more enjoyable experience. If you're just a regular average flyer and don't plan on doing anything crazy, my recommendations would be to use the FXC 2206 2350 kV motors. You'll have a much higher head speed than the FX 2206 2000 kV motors that I used on mine on 3 cell. Whichever motor you choose to go with, I highly recommend picking up some of these self-locking nuts. These are great for keeping your props on tight without using any Loctite. Also, it helps ease in the process of removing and replacing props as you break them because you don't have to find some weird and small Allen key or screwdriver to slide through the hole of the spinner to unscrew it. Now I'll explain some unique features about the QAV250. The QAV250 was by far the most easiest quad I've ever built. Reason is is the arms are already built into the main frame plate. This is great because it takes away from all the typical hardware that all the other quads typically use to mount the arms onto the frame. This saves time and weight. Speaking of weight, my QAV250 weighed in at 444 grams without a battery. Most of that weight comes from the G10 version that I have. The QAV250 comes with a power distribution board that bolts onto the bottom. This allows you to easily solder on your ESCs and LEDs along with your power wire. It also comes with four aluminum landing legs with little rubber ends. These help keep the power distribution board and the LEDs from hitting the ground in case of a crash. Also they help aid in getting the aircraft up a little bit higher so that you can take off in low grass or maybe a rocky terrain. Now let's talk LEDs. The LEDs on the QAV250 are great. Not only do they help aid in keeping your orientation in the evening hours, on 4 cell they're also bright enough to see from pretty far away in the daytime. Now onto the components that I chose to put on this aircraft. For the flight controller, I chose to use a Nazi 32 Acro. This flight controller has quickly become one of my favorite flight controllers to use on any aircraft I have that I don't need to use the GPS functions. However, if you're not familiar with using or tuning the Nazi 32, don't worry, you can use the Copter Control 3D. For the FPV gear that I'm using, I've chose the Lumineer CS600 Super 600 TV line camera. This camera has worked great in all conditions that I've flown it in. Nighttime, daytime, dusk, through trees, shaded areas. The only thing I found that I did not like was rain. For some reason, if a raindrop got on it, it'd pretty much black out everything behind it. So basically don't fly in rain, but honestly you shouldn't be flying in rain anyways, so that shouldn't be a problem. Next in line in FPV gear that's on my quad, I had the Team Black Sheep Core 25 Plug and Play OSD. I choose to run this OSD on pretty much all my aircraft I have. Reason being is it's great for the fact that it steps up or drops down the voltage always to 12 volt or 5 volt depending on what you decide to output to your video transmitter or your camera. So basically you can plug in any cell count battery 2 to 12 cell and it will always output 5 volts or 12 volts to your video transmitter or your camera depending upon what you select the voltage to output as. Another great thing about this OSD is it has built in filtering. So even though that you run the whole aircraft off one battery, you'll always have crystal clear video. You won't have any weird lines or anything dirty on your video signal it's always clear now to the video transmitter the video transmitter that i use on this qav250 as of right now is the fat shark 250 milliwatt 
5.8 gigahertz video transmitter. Now the only reason I'm running this instead of the 600 milliwatt immersion video transmitter is because it was the only one that was in stock at the time. The 600 milliwatt immersion video transmitter is a little bit smaller and it's only $5 more. So it's pretty much a no brainer which one you should choose. You should definitely choose the 600 milliwatt if you have the option to do that. I also found that it gives you about double the range of the 250. So that coupled with the circular polarized immersion antennas, you'll get about double the range of the 250 milliwatt. So here are a couple of my thoughts about the QAV250's design. I really liked how the arms are incorporated into the main plate. I found that incorporating the arms into the main plate really helps to strengthen and make the plate more rigid. This definitely came in handy when I crashed. So far with all the crashes I've had with the QAV250, all I've pretty much done is walked over there, picked it up, dusted it off, and kept flying. Now here's an example of pure skills. Hells yeah, I know how to kill two birds with one stone. I'm flying and mowing the grass. My wife's gonna be proud. And here's the same shot, just from a different angle. Holy shit. And now back to reality. I also like the rather low parts count. There generally isn't that many parts to put this thing together. There's a couple spacers, some screws, and basically a power distribution board, a main plate, and a top plate. Pretty simple. I also like how the nose of the main plate sticks out a little bit farther than the camera. This helps to protect the camera in case you nosedive or crash into something. It's generally just going to hit the front bumper in a sense instead of hitting the camera lens. I also like how they incorporated a lot of slots in the top plate. This helps to really mount different gear and or your Mobius camera or GoPro or whatever you feel like putting on the top a lot easier. So here's a couple things I have mixed feelings about. The top plate doesn't go all the way to the back of the aircraft. This basically cuts off a third of your mounting space on the top plate. However, this is a good thing because it makes strapping the battery on way easier because there's nothing obstructing your hands from cinching down the battery strap. But the number one thing that I have mixed feelings about is the weight of the aircraft. The all up weight of the G10 version gets rather heavy when you put the 1300 milliamp four cell on there. However, it makes up for it in precision flying. What I mean by precision flying is flying through really tight areas that other aircraft generally can't do due to their size or lack of smooth controls. What I've found is with the QAV 250's extra weight I have a really easy time going through trees that I generally couldn't go through with other aircraft that are lighter. Reason being is the extra weight really slows down the throttle response so you have a much slower up and down response to actually help you go through trees a lot smoother. Also the extra weight helps fight the wind. So when you're going through really tight areas and there's a breeze going through the trees, if I have a lighter aircraft, they generally blow with the wind and can cause you to blow into one of the trees. Where this one's a little bit heavier, so it doesn't really get blown around as much. Also, if you start running into tree branches up there, you probably fall out of the tree due to its extra weight versus just getting stuck in a tree branch, which is definitely a real possibility. It won't be very long before you start trying to go through trees. I found while flying the QAV250 that there's just something about the trees and how they call you to them. The feeling of bobbing and weaving through the trees canopies is just something you can't experience any other way unless you're a bird. I also found the feeling of flying through trees very addicting. It always keeps you on your toes because you never know what's around the next branch. All in all, the QAV250 has been a great addition to my mini multi-rotor fleet. Its robust design definitely makes it feel more comfortable to fly on days where it might be a little bit more windy and your other lighter mini quads might struggle. In a sense, it's like a bulldog. It's small, it's solid, and it's strong. Not to mention, its travel case pretty much makes it worth buying the quad alone. Anyways, that's my in-depth review on the QAV250. Like always, please rate, comment, and subscribe. Check the link in the description for the parts build list and for future FPV videos. Thanks for watching! Won't still perform ill We're not falling We're taking back to the days of yes, shawling We're holding on to what's golden On the stage I rage and I'm rolling We're not falling, a shot calling We're taking back to the days of yes, shawling We're holding on to what's golden On the stage I rage and I'm rolling